This is Congressman Sam B. Hall, Jr., reporting to you from Washington. Now that Congress and the administration have agreed on a plan to rescue the Social Security program, at least for the short run, eyes now must focus on the huge deficit building up in Medicare. Prominent government officials have appeared before Congress recently to warn that unless positive action is taken soon, that the nation's Medicare system could be on the financial ropes by the end of this decade. Although government and congressional leaders disagree on just how much the Medicare deficit will be, it is generally felt that the shortfall will be around $300 billion by 1995. In my judgment, Congress and the administration must come up with a plan to put Medicare on a sound financial basis as soon as possible. The current Medicare program, despite many problems, has still done a tremendous job for the nation's elderly and their health needs. Last year, approximately 29 million Americans participated in Medicare at a cost of approximately $50 billion. Now, according to the Congressional Budget Office, in the next four years, the Medicare tab will jump to $120 billion per year. The problem is that medical costs are escalating at a rate three times in excess of inflation. At the present time, Medicare is financed through a combination of Social Security taxes, premiums paid by beneficiaries, and general revenues. The hospital insurance part of Medicare is supported by a 2.6% of Social Security wages. This will go up in 1986 as a result of the provision in the Social Security Reform Bill. The second part of Medicare is a little more complicated. This is a voluntary participation program that, plays, that pays a portion of physician's fees. Beneficiaries pay about 25% of this with a monthly premium of $12.20. The Federal Treasury pays the other 75%, which currently comes to $15 billion per year. As shortfalls in the trust fund occur and the federal participation is increased, it is obvious that some constructive, and I might add courageous decisions, must be made by Congress and the Reagan administration. Above all, everyone should attempt to avoid the politics and partisanship that was so typical of the recent Social Security debate. Solutions will not come easy. For instance, some have suggested that we simply raise taxes to take care of the impending Medicare deficit. The Congressional Budget Office says we would have to almost double the hospital insurance trust fund tax to accomplish this. Other suggestions include increasing the monthly premium for doctor's fees freezing physician reimbursement rates, and letting Social Security beneficiaries choose between Medicare and a dollar-equivalent voucher system for health services. That's to name just a few. As you know, when the alarm spread on the financial plight of Social Security, a commission was formed. Frankly, I was disappointed in the commission because it did not come to grips with the problem. About all it did was spend a lot of taxpayer money in the future. A commission on Medicare financial woes is really not needed. And really, I don't know of a single member of Congress who isn't aware of this problem. Therefore, now is the time for Congress and the administration to roll up their sleeves and get on with a solution. This is Congressman Sam B. Hall, Jr., reporting to you from Washington. Thank you for listening.